Welcome back to another budget saver. We're going to look at this cookbook one more time because I think we found another surprisingly good dish, or at least we're going to keep our fingers crossed because not only is it really cheap to make, it looks easy and I think it's going to be really good. So let's just cut to the chase and get started because we are hungry. And by the way, instead of calling this a budget saver, I'm going to start calling this a rainmaker cookbook. Remember last week I cooked out of it and we had a violent thunderstorm come through? Look what it did again as soon as I pulled this cookbook out to cook from it. And welcome to the overhead. I'm not going to go through this cookbook like I did last week because I feel like I've already shown, you know, all the pictures and most of the recipes. So I'm not going to go over that again, but I did want to show you the recipes that we are going to be doing today. Now here's our menu. Um, this is a pretty big menu. Um, me and Mitch don't generally eat, you know, like a dessert um, and something like this uh, with a meal. So I've actually cut these two items out. We're doing the tuna burgers and the onion rings. So we have some limited ingredients in here. It looks really good, but it's also really cheap to make. And then of course we have our onion rings. Now, because I had most of the ingredients, this cost me under $10 to make. I already had some crackers. And of course, I already had a little bit of hot sauce, didn't have to buy that. And it's just eggs and salt and pepper. That's something, you know, usually you have anyway. And then this green onion, that was just a dollar for the bunch. So all in all, this is actually a really cheap dinner to make. And it should be super easy because all we're going to do is just start dumping things into the bowl. <laughs> so we've already got our tuna. There's our cracker crumbs. We've got our green onion. We're going to do our two eggs. I went ahead and uh, lightly beat them. We're going to do our salt, our pepper. Then we've got our red pepper flakes. Now this says a quarter teaspoon. I might cut that down just a little bit. Start with that and if I feel like it needs more the next time I make this then I can go ahead and add more. We're going to do our lemon juice. And then it says a dash of hot sauce. Uh, this is what I had in my refrigerator so I'm going to stick with this but just go ahead and use your favorite. And now we're just going to mix all of this together. It already smells good, so I kind of have high hopes for this. And it also helped me clean out quite a bit of extra things out of my cupboard, like three cans of tuna and some crackers that I kind of needed to use up. So this is kind of a cabinet of chaos uh, episode also. And I know we're actually going to put this on hamburger buns, but the recipe does say to go ahead and bake this in a greased loaf pan. So we're going to go right with what Betty Crocker says to do. And we're going to pat this down, put this in a 350 degree oven. Let this bake for about 25 minutes until done which gives us plenty of time to fry up our onion rings. And while that's in the oven, it's time to switch gears a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the small mess from the tuna. And then we're gonna go ahead and get these done. I went ahead and sliced these according to the recipe directions and then have had them soaking in this bowl of ice water for 30 minutes. So these are going to be ready to start the batter and frying process. So let's go ahead and get that started. Now the onion rings, I have drained them out of the water and patted them dry. So they are ready. And I've already got my flour in here. I'm just making two substitutions. I'm of course using the King Arthur gluten-free uh, measure for measure flour. And then instead of milk, I'll be using soy milk. So to the bowl, you're just going to add your two tablespoons of cornmeal. This is your baking powder and your salt. You'll add your milk. 
And then we're going to use an electric beater to make this nice and smooth, but I will spare you that noise so we'll come back together when this is thoroughly mixed. All right, we've got the onions, we've got the mixed batter, and we've got our oil that is nice and hot. So let's go ahead and put a couple onion rings in here and see how they do. Let's try a small one first just to get the hang of it and see if that oil is ready. Now it's said to kind of drain that a little bit and drop it in. All right, I'm gonna get a few more in that pot and then we will come back and see how they're doing. And we're trudging right ahead. I'm gonna flip some of these. You can see I already flipped that one. So that one's getting nice and golden brown. But they're looking really good. I'm gonna leave these in there just a little bit longer. But I wanted to show you a technique that I found on the internet. So my first couple kind of sunk to the bottom and that is not what you want. So the technique to prevent that is to kind of hold the onion ring in the fat about halfway down before releasing it. And then when it looks like it's gonna float, you can see it right there in the middle. It's kind of floating right in the middle of the pan. That way it's gonna kind of stay onto the surface and not get stuck to the bottom of your pan. Now, I've got a long way to go, so I'm going to keep trudging along and we'll come back when everything is ready. All right, and we are done with the loaf. I went ahead and pulled it out of the pan. Now, you can see, um, this is a little bit crumbly. I think it would have been better to form them into the patties themselves and then bake them, but I wanted to go ahead and at least follow the recipe the first time just to see um, why they said that, but I can't imagine a reason why they did it this way. So if you make it at home, maybe just form it into the patties and bake it that way. It said to serve it with lettuce and tomato. I've got that here. I've got our bun. I'm going to sneak a little bit of mayonnaise on that bun because I think that would be really good. And, and our onion rings are done. Look how beautiful and golden brown that looks. I think this is going to be a really good favorite. So let's go ahead and plate up. Mitch is getting our sandwiches nice and ready and we will be ready to do our final tasting. This is going to be so hard to eat. I think we should have just gone ahead and put another the rest of the bun on it. <laughs> I, yeah, there's there's a couple things with this recipe. One, like I said, just form them into patties. I mean, there's really no benefit to the loaf pan, right? You know, that makes it better or something like that. Um, and if you are going to just go ahead and put it in the loaf pan and you know, cut it into slices and do open face, just put it on a piece of bread. Yeah. The bun, I just don't... It's kind of like... I know! It's a weird shape to try to fit a loaf pan thing on. Yes! Whereas like, like a piece of bread is already mostly a square. Yeah, so, so like <laughs> they used a bun, but not a patty. Yeah. And then use the open face instead of a bread. I don't I don't know if I really get it. <laughs> um, but it's kind of not working, I think, because it's I think it's gonna fall apart. It's gonna be hard it's, to eat. Yeah. So but that doesn't mean that it's gonna taste bad. No. So I say we start with this because I'm the most curious about it. How are we supposed to eat? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> are we supposed to like cut into it? Nope. I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Okay. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! We, I mean it's ketchup. Okay, we kind of had to... Um, <laughs> After some careful editing, hopefully you won't notice how difficult it was. <laughs> <laughs> I know! Yeah, we, we had to edit out um, me dropping part of my sandwich, putting it back together, and then desperately needing a napkin. So, exactly what we thought. This is not the way to eat this. But... Flavor. 
flavor is so good. It is very good. Like, I it's wanna, surprising. yeah. It's surprising. I'm kind of jealous you got two bites. I only took one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's really good. I'm so surprised. Yeah. Because tuna can go either way. Yeah. It's such a strong flavor. Mm -hmm. But this, oh my gosh, just get that piece of bread Put it on there and you're good. Or, or do patty an and actual, bun. yeah, like patty and bun. Like yep. an actual sandwich wouldn't be bad. But now, Ooh. this might actually be the most important part. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. These are restaurant quality. Yeah. I would actually put them above quite a few restaurants over the years we've gotten onion rings from. Definitely. These are really good. This is, I think, the star, maybe, <laughs> of the plate. Okay, we're going to try to stop eating long enough to, like, <laughs> say something. The onion rings, oh my gosh, phenomenal. Very good. The whole meal is actually really good. Yeah. Um, you know, difficult to eat, just fix it, it'll be fine. Taste wise, excellent. Mm -hmm. Onion rings, the taste together yeah. goes so well. Yeah. I am so surprised. Um, the onion rings were a little bit time consuming to make as, you know, frying. Yeah, it's always you kind of time. So much and yeah. you gotta wait for each thing. Yeah. Unless you have a deep fryer, you're just kind of stuck for you know a little bit in the kitchen. Yeah. But I think this was worth the extra effort. I mean, we've had frozen onion rings. Yeah. And they are they don't even touch this by a mile. Now that leads to an odd conclusion. <laughs> Because last week I said, uh, I wouldn't go searching for this on eBay. You know, there's probably not a whole lot that you're going to make out of this. Now I don't know. <laughs> I want to try some more. Like, I'm not. I do too. Because I have to say, we did. I think we picked the two that looked the obviously best. Yeah, probably. There, like, a lot of the other recipes but were that weird. Lentil stew? Oh, yeah. There? I'm not saying. There's a lot of stuff in there, and the desserts look particularly odd, but also... But they work! Yeah, also, <laughs> like, I kind of want to try some. Yes! Okay, so you know what? <laughs> so, I'm going to revise last week's judgment. I'm going to say, if you find this on eBay or a yard sale or a thrift store for a few dollars, I say go ahead and get it. I think it's retroly fun. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed the whole vibe, you know, the 70s vibe from it. And all the meals we've cooked out of here has been strangely awesome. Yeah. And it makes me think that the other ones in here are going to be just as good. So I doubted Betty Crocker. And you know, right. after how many decades of, <laughs> you know, making her food and, you know, using the cookbooks through my mom and grandmother and now me. Why did I ever doubt her? <laughs> it, you know, if her name's on it, it's probably good. And this was kind of no exception. There's some oddballs in there you probably won't want to make. Yeah, they're probably. You know, they're very 70s. But there's some other ones like these. Ah, yeah. That are great. So, hidden gem. Yeah. I would, I would argue even some of the oddballs might be worth trying just for kicks and giggles. Mm -hmm. And even most of them like this, I think that are, in some cases, done weird, could be tweaked a little bit to be still a really good modern meal. Yeah, they still work. Yeah. So, okay, got to put that down. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Another dinner that was basically pennies on the dollar, used up a lot of stuff that you'll probably already have in your cabinet, won't cost you anything but time <laughs> to yeah. make, especially the onion rings, but is actually going to be worth it. Yeah. So, thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you try this because I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. 
And stay tuned for next week because we're leaving Betty Crocker and we're going to go into the Tightwad Gazette. Ooh. So we're going to pull out a few of her little uh, recipes. She don't have many, um, but they're kind of interesting and I think you'll like looking at them. And plus we'll look a little bit more into her book. So stay tuned for that one. We'll see you then. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.